insurance price online guaranteed any showers will be confined to the west coast and it'll be mainly dry elsewhere lowest temperatures of 7 to 10 degrees and now you're up to date on news talk the football show on off the ball with paddy power the greatest football partnership since shearer and owen i'm prepared to edit the mic well, do, do it then do it then what about your start to the game i was it wasn't bad was it <laughs> why should be an honest answer be a mistake how can a modern day manager not have a mobile phone why should he oh. Welcome along to Wednesday's football show. Nathan and Johnny Ward in studio this evening. We will hear from Charlie Eccleshore a little bit later from The Athletic to talk about Tottenham and what's going horribly wrong for them and what is the future for Maurizio Pochettino. We'll also talk about the Republic of Ireland senior team and the Republic of Ireland under-21s because we're going to be live from Tala Stadium. We're very much drinking the Kool-Aid when it comes to Stephen Kenny, Johnny. Yeah, we are. Live coverage of the Irish under-21s against Italy tomorrow night. You, We're going all in. You did say to me before the show, would there be any possibility that there will be empty seats like happened at the, the Wims game? Um, because there is a slight uh, ambiguity about the season tickets. This game was sold out, what, two weeks ago? Yeah. Uh, um, so much like last night, I really hope that there aren't any empty seats because I know I've say an example, and I know a lot of people are in this position, so I brought my kids to the first two home qualifiers against Armenia and Luxembourg, and they loved it. And... A lot of their friends went, and they're all keen to go, and they now know a couple of the players. And like an idiot, I never bought tickets for this. And then all of a sudden, it's sold out. So I'm just mm. keeping the head down, not mentioning that the uh, match is on tomorrow night. But I'd imagine there's an awful lot of people who are in position thinking, oh yeah, under 21s, I'll go along, I'll get tickets the day before. And it's sold out, which is brilliant, if the stadium is packed with 8,000 people. Mm. If it turns out that a lot of people have got tickets but don't really have an intention of going, pass them on. This is a, it's a public service announcement from Nathan that I completely endorse, but Aaron Connolly's not playing, right? Which mm. is, is a disappointment in itself, but Kenny did have a sort of a four into three or five into three quandary with his strikers anyway. Um, I'm, re, I'm in Tbilisi, I'm going to miss this game, so I don't know. Oh, <clears throat> you've turned your back on Stephen Kenny and the under-21s. Your footballing <laughs> hipster credentials are dead. It's nothing to do with hipster credentials, uh, footballing <laughs> hipster credentials. But I don't know... You've spent <clears throat> probably... Two grand going to Tbilisi and back, thinking no, that that like would that. enhance your hipster credentials. But actually, this Nate, is Nate, this, Nate, is, Nate, this Nathan, is poor form, Johnny. It, it, is, it is my my first Ireland, second Ireland away game. Um, Where was your first? My first one was supposed to be when Ireland played Georgia in Tbilisi, and lo and behold, uh, Nagorno Karabakh and South Ossetia and so forth, Russia and Georgia go to war. So the game has moved moved to Mainz. Did you go to Mainz? No, I had no interest. So I booked my tickets to Georgia, which were four hundred and fifty quid or something like that. I was like, well, I might as well just go to Georgia. And then I met uh, a fellow over there from Portugal who happened to live in Dublin, and uh, he's a photojournalist. We've been very friendly ever since. It was actually a great holiday. But my first, so my first away game for Ireland was actually uh, a game that made me feel ashamed to be an Irish football fan, and that was, as you might guess, the win in Cardiff. Oh, yeah. So like the Welsh the, win. Yeah, four one. No, sorry, the 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 one nil in the playoffs. Oh. So, so why were you ashamed, though? Because you felt you were hopping on the bandwagon? No, because just, like, everyone was celebrating a win that was, like, anti-football, and it was so ah, bad. come on. It was so bad, Nathan. Come on. I counted after 20 minutes, I think we'd, we'd pass the ball, like, once or something like that, and that was Yeah, but we mistake. won. Who cares? Granted, Mark... Is that not support? You want your team to be victorious. I cheered them on, but it was, uh, it was like... It was I'm a, sorry, it was that is the ultimate football hipsterness. It was you would sooner your team lose. No, no, I didn't, but I... I, I oh, you're just I, saying I, that. I felt that... It you felt ashamed that your team won. I felt it was a, it was cheating in the sense that it, we were so bad. Any, any, any Welsh fan who was there would have gone home and said... Christ Almighty, what a bunch of cavemen. Um, but I don't expect that in, as much as we haven't played amazing football on this trip, I think, uh, I'm really hoping Connolly starts, but he's not going to start tomorrow night. But now Kenny has to play three of Adamida, Troy Parrott, um, Alaphobi. Off Labby and, 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 and Obafemi, who I was reading today, um, has to be very carefully managed in terms of his hamstring issue, mm. which has to be a concern because we've had Sean Maguire have his, his injuries. But Obafemi is he's like a, what would you call him, like a pint sized striker. He's very he's small, he's, he's very sturdy. And Kenny's been debating um, can he play up top on his own because there's this kind of fashionable theory that you can't play a guy as small as that up front on his own. I don't, I don't know if that's true. But if you were to play either. Obafemi and Parrot or 
off a labby, any of those three is going to be very exciting. So the one good thing about Conley not playing is that you get to see maybe Obafemi bizarrely making his under-21 debut months after he made his senior debut. You must be rolling in it at the moment, Johnny. What? I'm just saying. You spent the big bucks to go support your country. The flights were 200. There's no guarantee the football will be any better on Saturday than it was I'm pretty in Cardiff sure. that night. There's It'll be no better than guarantees. Cardiff. It'll be better than Cardiff. I wouldn't put money on I it. I want to oh, ask Johnny, you. Did you get a new laptop? I did. How much that cost you? Uh, it's not really relevant, is it? <laughs> I think it is when the price is right <laughs> there for everybody. I literally... <laughs> uh, <laughs> I literally 549 euro. I literally just bought it from one of those... Like, you wouldn't have taken the price off before you came in. I literally just bought it and I was in a rush to get here. Sorry, that, that's not an expensive laptop. So that's probably implying that I don't have much money as opposed to... But because the Mac... Laptop. So I water damaged my Mac. Oh no. And How did that happen? Um, yeah. <laughs> well, I brought it to a festival that I needed to work. I needed to work at the festival, but I put too many. What festival? Uh, All together now. And how did you need to work? Because uh, I would be doing tipping work on Saturday and Sunday. Oh. Just little columns that I couldn't write on Friday. Anyway, I, I spilled beer on it. And uh, it was gone beyond recall. Wow. Sums it up, doesn't More it? More to the point is Aaron Connolly going to start? No. No, definitely not. I you know, I've come around to the idea a little bit more when... So what are the options? The options are he starts James Collins, or maybe he moves Callum Robinson into the centre and plays Adam Judge or Callum O'Dowda on the right. Yeah. But it's a, it's it a would really be a huge call. call. Like, it's not a huge maybe call. Maybe he's... It you feels know. for Mick McCarthy like it would be. Maybe he's yeah. seen such a spark and maybe... Robbie Keane is at training going, mm -hmm. you know what, you know I said, let's all calm down about Troy Parrott, he's not the new me, but this guy just has something that, sometimes it just clicks, and you've got to roll with it, and let's let him at it. If it was at home, in a way, it feels like it'd be easier, but the fact, actually, for him, that it's away from home, Georgia, I would say, will have more possession of the oh, ball than we will. 100%. That his pace, the odd long ball forward, Maybe it suits him down to the ground. I would love to see him start. It just doesn't feel very Mick McCarthy-like. The, the, the case against it is that he hasn't... How many of these players has he ever played with? Like, any of them? I wouldn't worry about that. But like, No, but it's like you need, you need to fit into a team. So, mm. like, we and Ireland play a certain way. Um, he hasn't played with any of these, these players before. So there's, an, there's no cohesion there. The, the other thing is, none of these players could do what he did against Spurs, I believe. None of them could be capable of actually doing that. As much as Spurs are a bit of a mess, that performance. As Shane Keegan pointed out here on, on, Friday, on Saturday, he could have four or five goals mm. at this stage. Um, I think he should start. And I think, I, I'm coming around, I think it's odds against, but it's not a long price that he starts. The other good news from an Irish point of view is that Shane Duffy is going to travel to Georgia. Mm. Uh, that he trained with Brighton today, so he's obviously going to fly in tomorrow morning, link up with the Ireland squad, and presumably is ready to go. Now Mick McCarthy again will have a decision to make because are you at risk if you push it of a missing Switzerland, mm. if he aggravates it? Do you just hold fire and trust that John Egan and Kevin Long can get the job done in Georgia, that Georgia are going to pose something of a threat, but really it's all about nicking a goal over yeah. there. Whereas Switzerland, we know, are going to create a huge amount of attacks at home, and you want Duffy there. Mm -hmm. I don't think so, Nathan, to be honest. I think you he, think he throws him in? I think he throws him in. I, I, don't, I don't see the defence being... I think this will be a... You know, Georgia haven't scored against any of the, the top three, as far as I know, in the tournament. So, and I thought they were poor in Dublin. Um, I, I actually thought they were a lot better when they last came to Dublin. I don't think the defence will be stretched. So I think Duffy will have a reasonably OK time. Um, I think our problem will be what we do when we have the ball rather mm. than our defence. In fairness to Duffy, it was a good point made by... Um, it was Gary Bream was saying that Duffy drops very deep and that kind of... That makes it difficult for the midfield. But at the yeah, same I've time... I've never heard anyone actually raise that point because mm -hmm. Duffy we all assume is the first name on the team sheet, essentially, because he's such a rock at the heart of that Irish defence. And like so many of our recent games, he's been man the match and, and scoring as gets well. Gets a like. goal and body on the line, defensive performance. Whereas Gary Breen was making the point, if anyone missed it, that part of the reason that Ireland struggled to keep hold of the ball and struggle to get their front three involved is that Duffy is sitting so deep. There's this massive gap between the defence and the attack. Mm. Now, is Duffy doing that because that's what he's been told to do? Or is Duffy doing that because he's scared of his life that if he steps further forward, the midfielders don't have the quality to keep hold of the ball, they lose it. 
and he doesn't have the pace to get back. I, I don't think it's a, it's coming from above. I'm speculating here, but I don't think you tell your defence to, to invite pressure by going back so far. And I suppose if you, if you think of the complete antithesis of this, uh, Virgil van Dijk and the way Liverpool defend, mm. and they defend so high, um, Kyo isn't particularly fast. He's obviously not fast at all at the moment, but when he's playing, he's uh, he's, he's not fast. So Duffy is probably conscious of them being caught in behind. Um, mm. There isn't an awful lot of pace. Like Even Stevens isn't the quickest. So that we, we're not the quickest for a ball in behind. And we're really caught out in behind. But we, I thought in the, Switz, in the Switzerland game, we invited an awful lot of pressure on. And it was difficult for Glenn Whelan because he was in a bit of a, he was in a, bit of a Bermuda triangle at times in terms of dealing with it. But he's going to, be, he's going to have a big game to play on uh, Saturday, Glenn Whelan. And uh, I kind of think we need to win and I think if we need to win we should be starting Aaron Connolly. Oh we absolutely need to win mm. and it all opens up beautifully mm. if we do win. Well, two wins and we're one win after this and we're One win after this and we're we're yeah. laughing. So yeah. and maybe that again is reason for starting Shane Duffy you throw everything into this. Yeah. If just say if Connolly does come in and takes with like the proverbial duck to water um, we might have a different Ireland team by the time that we play our last game and um, when the Danes come we might we might have a bit more about us going forward but at the moment it's very hard to see us with what we've had beating Denmark or Switzerland um, and the, the Georgia one is the most likely so Do you want to hear from the Irish camp? Well Matt Doherty is one of those who's Doherty. hoping to come in to the uh, as our friends on a Saturday would call him I yeah. can't believe you missed last Saturday um, what was my excuse last year? I was away on a, a sponsored cycle. <laughs> sponsor? Who are you raising money for? Um, I, I'm not laughing now because it was a local charity. A cause. I think it Where was cycling. Dingle. I think it actually. I, I I went there not really knowing what the charity was. It was just kind of a go to Dingle for the weekend. I think it was for the local ladies uh, GA club, and it was in memory of a guy who passed away down there. But um, very enjoyable weekend. Well done. You missed four Irish goals. Yeah. Last but Saturday. Was, what time was the Brighton game? Aaron Connolly, literally, we're on air a minute and he gets that first one. I, that's very disappointing. You'll be back next week. Um, I'm, I'm, yeah, I'm in Tbilisi, but I'll be back for that. Okay, well, okay. I have, a, I have a feeling I'll be replaced by Shane Keegan. If It's kind of like a striker who gets injured and he just keeps missing games and then Keegan comes in. The You're leash. essentially Shane Long right now. <laughs> <laughs> At least I'm here. No. Matt Doherty was in front of the media today talking about the possibility that he may play a left back. I'm totally comfortable playing in that position. I've I played two seasons there for Wolves, one and a half seasons maybe it was. Um, so yeah, like uh, it'll be nothing new to me. Um, so if, if that is the case, then yeah, I'll I'll enjoy it and and grab the opportunity with both arms. When did you actually last play left back? Um, probably about three years ago. Probably probably before. Um, Nuno was the manager that se that season, um, probably in, and, and at the start of that season, probably more than anything. So um, it, ha it has been a while, but um, I guess we're professional and I'll be able to adapt. Is it very different? Right yeah, back? it is different. Um, I know some people might think sometimes uh, it's just right back, left back, just go over the other side. But positionally um, and and things like that, there are there are there are differences. But like I said, we're, we're professionals and I'm professional, so I should be able to be good enough to adapt pretty quickly. Matt, I suppose maybe some people are looking from the perspective that you know, it could be a weakness. We have a, a, a right back playing a left back, but how much of a weapon could it be that you could be you know, a real threat to an opposition defence coming in off the left on your right foot and really causing some, some damage to their defence? Yeah, like when, when I was in that position, that's what I used to love doing. Um, I played there for like a year and a half, two years, and like during that time, I was saying to myself, I oh, actually maybe I enjoy it more than playing on the right hand side. Obviously, my mind changed once I went back to the right hand side and realised that that was better. Um, but but like going going forward, I think my assists and goals were uh, at Wolves at the time were still maybe one of the higher ones in the team. We're still up, um, and yeah, you can you can cut in, you can do many things. You can do long long field uh, passes you can obviously shoot you can play one twos around corners um, and they always think you're going to go inside which makes you able to go down the line as well so um, yeah look up going forward will be I would I, I enjoy it going forward from the left hand side and um, it kind of opens the game up and uh, it would be something that I would like doing yeah yeah, that's Matt Doherty there, sounding a little bit more open to the possibility that he might play left back because certainly interviews in recent weeks when it was almost assumed that he would come in and replace Enda Stevens, who mm. suspended, he was very much putting that down as I wouldn't presume anything in terms of my selection for this team. Obviously a bit down, you can understand probably feels he's been a fall guy 
for the poor performance in Gibraltar when nobody really performed pretty well but Mick McCarthy instantly the only decision he made was that Matt Doherty doesn't work as a right side midfielder despite being arguably our form player in the Premier League over the past 15-16 months is it a no-brainer to play him at left back? I don't think it is no because he's, he's, he doesn't play left back and he's, he has played left back has played, but he's not a left back and now Dennis Verwin was an outstanding left back when he played for Ireland but Matt Doherty um, Matt Doherty's best position is almost certainly right of a three, right of a five so right wing back um, which is which would work work nicely with Stevens, but um the, the, I thought Mick jumped the gun in terms of that Gibraltar game which I think you're alluding to there mm. what's one of the main reasons James McLean plays for Ireland is because of his defensive work if you've Doherty in the right wing he's going to do a lot of good defensive work but he's a very dynamic player and I think him and Coleman could still work fine I thought it Rob, is bizarre mm. considering the, the, like you look the pitch, at the games the, the, since Sean I'm, McGuire as well like his, his standing prop, like I'd forgive anyone a, a bad game that day like, who played well for Ireland nobody and Hendrick as you say the conditions were horrendous the pitch was plastic pitch the wind was horrific and nobody played particularly well, but also I actually thought in the first half, himself and Coleman linked up together they did quite a, a few times. Yeah. But like Coleman and Robinson, the odd time linked up, it's not as if there's this incredible right-sided partnership that has been discovered since. What other game are we going to have a team camped in their own half? Like where that's, mm. it's, it's hard for anyone. You know, you know yourself, like it's, it's hard to play against a team that are, that are, that are absolutely front-loaded in their own half. Um, I, I, I wonder is Mick, because like, Mick could play McLean left-back and he could then he could make it a little bit easier in terms of bringing Connolly in. I don't think he's going to do that, but I think he's, he'd be almost afraid to not pick Doherty now because he would almost risk Doherty just being very, very pissed off about everything. Mm. Because to my mind, as much as Coleman's so solid, like Doherty was our form right back, I and mean, he's not been playing. Yeah, so you know? that is one of the big decisions. James McLean does seem to be the other option from the way Mick McCarthy's been talking this week, it would mean shuffling quite a few things. That's the, that's the issue with that. I, I think he's he's had enough enforced changes as it is without doing an, an unenforced change, which would be McLean. Um, McLean should be grand left back. Um, how would McLean work? I presume then Connolly would play if McLean goes left back. Connolly would play sort of McLean's position because he's been playing sort of left from you know. Um, but I, I I honestly don't know how Doherty will work. I I've never seen him play in left back. I don't know how he's well. He's everyone who's seen football. him play for Wolves in the Championship always felt he was very solid and that he didn't mm. look out of place at all. But it'll be hard for him because he, he, he's he's very he's quite right footed as as mm. a right footed player. It's always hard, I think, anyways, for the better players in the team to come in. He's coming from a Wolves side who generally again dominate possession, albeit they had like I think. 21% on generally, Saturday. Generally, generally, yeah. except against Manchester City. Um, and, like, has Ruben Neves and Jean Moutinho playing inside him in the middle of midfield? Unfortunately, Liam Whelan is not Jean Moutinho. That's it must be like a county player coming back playing for the club in a way. And that's, you know, it's like, these lads are like, well, I know I have a lot of defensive work to do here, and I, I'm not sure how it's going to totally work for him, but I'd say he'll be eager to make his mark. He, both he and Connolly are, they're very confident characters. Mm. I don't think they'll be, they'll have any fear. It'll be interesting uh, to see if they're both playing, how it'll work, but um, I'm looking forward to seeing Doherty in Ireland jersey. Shawnee Maguire was alongside Matt Doherty. Shawnee Maguire, who, as you mentioned, against Gibraltar, started this campaign as Ireland's main man up front. Didn't work out for him, has had consistent hamstring problems and then this freak eye injury as well. He's still waiting for his first senior Irish goal. He was talking today at the press conference about working with Robbie Keane. I don't feel the pressure at all, um, to be honest. Um, obviously, it, it, it makes you want to obviously open your account and, and obviously make that dream come true and just go on for your country. Um, well, as I mentioned before, it's been frustrating, obviously not getting that first goal and performing well when, when given the chance, but obviously there, there'll be no better better time to get it in, in these these next two games and hopefully they can you know, get that chance. Sean, have you spoken to Robbie Keane about that and has he been giving you much coaching there in the setup? Yeah, massively. I think I've been involved now in, in three international you know, setups with Robbie and even in training. Um, for example, even yesterday after training, we st we stayed out for 15 minutes, and he was telling me obviously 80, 90 percent of his goals are scored uh, within the box, one touch, two touches, and and that's something that I aspire to, and, and hopefully I can do be better. And um, I've scored three goals this season, and off pl I'm playing off the left, but even just giving giving me tips here and there um, can only make me make me better. Oh. 
Nice sound effects in your new laptop. Yeah, I must turn down the sound on this 595 euro laptop. No, 549. 549, which they does screwed you there. They charge you 50 quid more than the asking price. Sorry. Yeah. Um, poor Shawnee. Has he missed his chance? Um, I think he. So, has you look at it right now, Dave McGoldrick is probably first choice. Mm. Aaron Connolly is coming through quickly. James Collins came off the bench and scored. He and. Did had a good impact on the game and he chose Scott Hogan to start which will suggest he's also very much in his thinking Callum Robinson can play in that position you do just wonder what the impact of Shawnee Maguire and where he can make an impact in the game he's, he's a very good natural goal scorer and if we have them on the stretch in the second half having him and, uh, and Connolly running in behind Sean, Sean Maguire isn't blisteringly fast but he's a very good runner and he does have five yards of pace he's a very intelligent player I think the most important thing, Nathan, is he's injury-free and he's in good form for his club. And week in, week out, he is playing against teams that are better than Georgia. No doubt about that. Um, and I, I don't think he's... You think the championship is better than Georgia? Um, yeah. The, 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 certainly the better teams. Like Georgia, like... Did you see them in Dublin? Yeah, but... I did. I thought, actually, they looked technically quite good. Yeah, but did they... You, were did com- they? they looked more comfortable in possession of the ball than we did. Um, Preston would 100% be better than Georgia. What? Yes, of course. In any event, he's in, he's in form. I don't think he's totally out of the picture, but I'm, I'm, I'm not going to lie. I have absolutely no idea what fun players he's going to play here. I think the fact that he said about Connie that he can play in basically any of the three positions, he can play anywhere up top, mm. that was quite interesting because it was almost preempting um, what he might do. But I think Mick's gotten, uh, gotten away with one here, by the way. He wasn't in the squad initially. Now, maybe he was always going to bring him in. But like he didn't become a better player in the last week. You know, he's, he's still the same player he was a week ago. It just happens that he scored twice against Spurs. But Mick hadn't seen him do that. You, like, you should have done enough f- footballing intelligence to know from watching him how many times that he's... But Mick's attitude, you might say it's old school, is that I'm not going to start or involve a player in a huge qualifier who's never started a senior game of football. So he's never you, started a Premier League match. So then you play players who consistently don't score goals instead of them. Do you know what I mean? We, we don't have any goals. Well, this scored. is the Declan Lynch argument, was it, from his Sunday Independent yeah. article. Why would, we, why would we select a 17-year-old who might not score when we can select 27-year-olds who we know definitely won't score? Yeah, I mean, I, I still think Troy Parrish should be around the squad. He didn't play... He played OK against Colchester for Spurs. He could easily have scored and you'd have had, had a different narrative. But in any event, um, I, 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 I think... Mick makes this point, which I think he's wrong about, because um, if, 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 if he starts Connolly and Connolly has a poor game, he says people will say he was stupid. That is not the case. I think there is a clamour for Connolly to at the very least play, mm. and anyone who saw him last Saturday would be thinking he's not going to play shit in Tbilisi. Simple as that. Famous last words. All right, we need to take a break. We're going to talk to Charlie Eckelshare from The Athletic about Spurs. We're having a bit of a nightmare. They are. Uh, and where Mauricio Pochettino goes. A nice segue from Connolly into Spurs. Uh, Guillaume Balaguer has a book out, what, about 18 months now on Mauricio Pochettino. It ended up almost being a diary of a season. It's well worth reading in that you get a good insight into Pochettino and just how narcissistic he is. Oh, that's a big word. He... He's just so self-obsessed in a rather brilliant way that he lets go in the book. Like, he's so vain. Mm. He's constantly going home and watching himself in, say, post-match interviews and going, I'm looking a bit chubby. And goes on this insane diet. Puts Mm. the entire coaching staff in an insane diet. And then two months later, he's back drinking wine every night going, I'm winning all our games. I'm having a glass, a couple of glasses of wine every evening. Could you learn from him on either score? Well, I might have a couple of glasses of wine some evenings, and Neither's I should look in the mirror a little bit more often. No, I get that, Johnny. It's did, fine. You lo- did you look at yourself on Twitter with the award all of last weekend? Oh, of course. Yeah, of course. It's me, Nathan. That I won it. Nathan and my award. <laughs> yeah. Just got What's your award, actually? Is that it? No, there? That's not a, no. no, it's mantelpiece, Johnny. No, I wish Shark Cooper will bring it in next time he's in. Put a good ads, Johnny. But it's a good conversation. I wish we could have gone on longer with that. Football on Off The Ball With Paddy Power The greatest football partnership since Shearer and Owen Lunchtime Live Anxiety, grief, stress, depression These are the types of mental health issues many of us face on a daily basis 
tomorrow is World Mental Health Day and on Lunchtime Live from midday we'll have clinical psychologist Dr Eddie Murphy live in studio to answer your queries no matter how big or small. Email me now on Lunchtime Live at Newstalk.com or tweet me at Lunchtime Live NT. Lunchtime Live with Kira Kelly with the matter private. Tomorrow at midday on News Talk. This Irish success story is brought to you by Guaranteed Irish. Did you know that as one of Ireland's leading healthcare companies, MSD Ireland employs over 2,300 people at five locations in Dublin, Carlow, Cork and Tipperary. MSD look for team members who want to make a difference through their work. If you're interested in helping impact lives of patients around the world, visit jobs.msd.com forward slash Ireland. Guaranteed Irish welcomes companies that are altogether better choices for our communities. So look out for it. Guaranteedirish.ie. Altogether better. With Brexit looming, it's time for those in business to take control of the things you can and prepare for the things you can't. Bank of Ireland is hosting a series of Get to Grips with Brexit events across the country, bringing together industry experts to help you take practical steps to minimise disruption to your business. Search BOI Brexit and join us at an event near you. The Get to Grips with Brexit series. Bank of Ireland. Begin. Bank of Ireland is regulated by the Central Bank of Ireland. The Dublin Town Food and Drink Festival this October 14th to 20th, serving up the city's best food and drink experiences, bursting with over 50 experiences, including masterclasses, demos, walking trails, talks, delicious dishes and delectable drinks. See foodanddrinkfest.ie to book your experiences now. Supported by Fault Ireland as part of Taste the Island. You know what they say, good things come to those who wait. But three to five working days, lads, that's pushing it now. If I'm down in Arklow or Mullingar trying to order a new washing machine, I want it from someone with the largest next day delivery and installation area in Ireland. And that's appliancesdelivered.ie. Whether you want a dishwasher in Dublin, a new oven in Nace, or a tumble dryer in Tullamore, Appliances Delivered has you covered. Plus, we're the highest rated electrical retailer in Ireland, with a juicy 9.7 on Trust Pilot as voted for a Buy Yourselves. Get next day delivery and installation now at appliancesdelivered.ie. Skoda's best ever 0% finance offer is available across the entire range, across the entire country. Finance is made under a higher purchase agreement and subject to lending criteria. Deposit required, terms and conditions apply. Skoda Finance is authorised by the Federal Financial Supervisory Authority in Germany and regulated by the Central Bank of Ireland for conduct of business rules. See? The entire country. Offer ends 31st of October. Skoda. Made for Ireland. Does your office need a facelift? A new look reception area? A modern, open plan office layout? Perhaps some stylish new glazed partitions? Or a cool staff canteen? Not sure where to start? Whatever your need, Hunt Office Interiors has the expertise to guide you. With showrooms in Dublin, Limerick, Cork and Belfast. Why not talk to our team about transforming your office environment? Contact Hunt Office Interiors today for a free consultation. Call us on 1890 771100 or email interior at huntoffice.ie Hunt Office for all things office Have a great evening with itsforwomen.ie Don't live your life on hold Get a quote now at itsforwomen.ie and see why we're trusted by over 130,000 women in Ireland News Talk brought home gold at the 2019 IMRO Radio Awards winning in 8 categories Best Current Affairs Programme The Hard Shoulder Best Sports Programme Off The Ball Live Best Specialist Music Broadcaster Tom Dunn Best Drama Searching For Dadley D Best Sports Broadcaster Nathan Murphy Best Interactive Speech Programme Lunchtime Live Best Speech Broadcaster Ivan Yates And Full Service Station of the Year This is IMRO Award Winning Radio This is News Talk. Off the ball. This is News Talk. So it's been a pretty calamitous start to the season for Spurs. They currently sit ninth in the Premier League. They've lost three of their opening eight matches and they were humiliated at home in the Champions League last week by Bayern Munich. To talk about what's going on at Tottenham, I'm joined by Charlie Eccleshair of The Athletic. Evening, Charlie. Hello, how are you doing? So, this has been coming, it seems, for quite a while for Tottenham because their form ever since the turn of the year has been 
quite horrific. 22 points from 20 Premier League matches since mid-February. As you're right, it's borderline relegation form. It's fewer points than Crystal Palace. It's similar to West Ham and Burnley. They lost over double figure in terms of games last season. What has gone wrong? I think, well, I mean, it's, it's complicated. It's not one thing. Broadly, Spurs were overachieve, overachieving for some time. You know, you look at their outlay um, compared to a lot of their rivals and, you know, it was far smaller. They didn't sign a player uh, for 18 months. And, you know, in the 18 months basically leading up to them getting the Champions League final. So I think to a degree, there was always going to be a point at which this happened. And, you know, many at the club feared it would happen unless there was a big shake-up, you know, because you've had the same players for so long and there does reach a point at which it just gets a bit stale through no one's fault you know for the players hearing the same voices uh you know same manager and i think that coupled with the sense of deflation after that champions league final defeat has just it's come together and things are a bit flat at the moment it feels like one way or another um they need freshening up the headline of the piece that you co-wrote with Jack Pitbrook on The Athletic is the place is a regime and they're sick of it. And Rizzo Pochettino was famed and it was seen as very much a positive and worked wonders, these double sessions, how hard he pushed the players in terms of the energy, in terms of the press that Tottenham were able to put on and it reaped its benefits for years. It feels as though it's gone a little bit stale. How much of that, from your reading of it, is down to Pochettino maybe not changing his ways as the squad has developed? And how much of it is down to not being able to freshen up the squad in the way he wanted? The fact that actually it is, by and large, a lot of the same figures who've been listening to a lot of the same thing for four or five years now. Well, Pochettino wanted to freshen things up. You know, he, this, I don't think this has come as a massive surprise. You know, he, he wanted... Uh, you know, as long ago as summer of 2018, there were a few players he would have been happy to get rid of. That didn't really happen, um, you know, and there weren't any signings. So I think that's that's a huge part of it. It is just, you know, Sir Alex Ferguson talked about four-year cycles uh, and how either the manager or the players needs to change mm. uh, after a four-year period because otherwise, through no one's fault, it, it, there is just a feeling of staleness. And I think that is what's happened here. I think actually... To give Pochettino his due, he has tried to shake things up a little bit. Um, you know, we're seeing them pressing less uh, than they have previously. That was their calling card, but he's realised that that isn't really possible anymore. You know, the players had almost reached their physical capacity. Add in as well, a lot of them went deep for the 2018 World Cup, so there's a legacy of that. So I, I don't think he can be accused of, um, you know, rigidity necessarily. Uh, it, it may be, though, that there are kind of growing pains because trying to evolve a team isn't easy. We've seen that many times, you know, even Sir Alex Ferguson had that when he was in the, the process of changing things, you know, you might have a fallow year or mm. two. They did spend money during the summer and I'm interested in your thoughts on their transfer dealings and where it did go wrong. So they spent a club record fee on Ndombele, who has shown signs that he could be a good Premier League player, if not more than that, but he's had a few injury problems. Giovanni Lo Celso came in, who was exceptional last year, while at Betis on loan from Paris Saint-Germain, but again has been injured. The problem seems to have been, actually, they haven't been able to get rid of any players and how destabilising that has been. Like, I still think Danny Rose, as much as people talk about Christian Eriksen, a prime example whereby they decide to leave him off pre-season so that he can find a new club. He doesn't find a new club. He's suddenly parachuted back in and he's pretty much first choice for the first five or six games of the season and the sort of message that gives out. That sort of transfer policy of, of isolating players but then trying to bring them back in, is that of Pochettino's doing or is that Daniel Levy's doing? I think it's a combination. I mean, it wasn't the summer that he wanted really. I mean, yes, he was given some money at last and they brought in three players. Um, but it's been unlucky because Sessegnon's been injured, Lacelso has been injured, uh, and Ndombele. I, I do think will become a good player, but he, he is taking a bit of time to readjust. And then, yes, you've got that situation where players... I mean, Danny Rose has been close to leaving on a number of occasions, but hasn't gone. And there's only so many times you can you can have that with players, I think. Um, and you then look at... You know, there are a bunch of guys whose contracts will, will expire at the end of the season, so that adds another layer of uncertainty. And I think a lot of supporters, um, you know, would, would almost want some of those players to play less because if they're not going to be there long term, why pick them? I, 
I don't think it's quite as simple as that. I think it's, you know, if you know, you've got an, an asset like Christian Eriksen, even if he's going at the end of the season, do you just not play him? Mm. I don't know about that. I think um, it's just unfortunate in a way, you know, guys like the so Sessegnon, who might have been able to phase out some of those one-to-way players, haven't been available. So his hand has been forced a little bit. The stories that have been coming out about how frustrated the players are of the, as you're right, five years of authoritative controlling management, a relentless schedule, players complaining at how few days they're given off. Pochettino, he must realise this, he must hear this. Has he been making changes behind the scenes even since the start of the season as things have started to get away from him, as, as he reacted to the negative vibes that seem to be around the dressing room? Yeah, he, I mean, he has scaled down some of that uh, intensity, as I was saying before. You know, he has acknowledged the fact that that high octane pressing game was no longer sustainable. So, you know, there have been steps made to do that. But Pochettino is an intense manager. And, and what's interesting, and you, you see this very often, is that, um, you know, a manager's methods are praised. Mm. Uh, and then those very same methods are reframed uh, once results don't go so well. So, you know, pushing players is generally deemed to be a good thing. Then when results don't go so well, it's, is he pushing them too, too much? And, and I appreciate, you know, as a manager, you do have to adapt. And I think he is. I think he is trying to, you know, change the way they play. But it's hard because that has been what their success has been based on. And then playing in an entirely different way doesn't always come, um, doesn't come overnight. You're right about the dressing room after the defeat to Brighton at the weekend and the silence in the dressing room that whether they were just shell-shocked, whether it was the captain to Hugo, Lloris, the injury to Hugo Lloris, their captain, or whether again it was a sign of a lack of character, a lack of leadership, that senior players weren't standing up and making their point. Has it all come to a head last weekend against Brighton or has this been building of players the likes of Harry Kane Toby Alderweireld maybe they've said everything they can say what, what's your sense of why a dressing room is like that after the defeat to Brighton yeah I mean I think the silence um, my understanding of it more was it was during the game and you know according to um, Brighton uh, players there was surprise at that because you know in, in a game such as that when a team's losing you would expect um a kind of more ranting and raving mm. and straight, you know we've all played in football matches and when you're losing generally you're you know you're digging people out or you're trying to encourage them or whatever it is but you're you're doing something I do wonder how much of that Larice uh, injury kind of shell shocked them I mean I, I was at the game and it, it did feel I, I said to the guy I was watching next to it was like this it feels like Tottenham are here for the taking uh, as soon as that first goal went in because they were so flat now, Pochettino, um, in his press conference, said that he thought that Lloris injury was a big factor. You know, he's their captain, uh, their leader, and, you know, these are humans. And, you know, seeing him suffer a pretty horrific injury, um, you know, was, was, was a big explainer for that. But I think that would, that would have stood up more if this result had been a blip. I think given the context of the fact they'd had some other dodgy results, um, it was disappointing, I think, for Tottenham supporters and surprising that given where they are and given what was at stake and given how badly they were playing, that there wasn't more of a reaction and that they weren't more vocal. One of the reasons that there was so much love for Pochettino, even outside of Tottenham, probably in the English media, was that he was bringing through good young English players. Deli Alley and Harry Kane, very much the main two. Now, Harry Kane continues to deliver goals, but Deli Ali has just fallen off the face of the earth over the past 18 months. He's had a couple of injuries, but from a player who I think a lot of people expected would go on to be maybe one of the dominant attacking midfielders in the Premier League over the next four or five years to somebody who maybe can't even get in Tottenham's first choice 11 at the moment. What's gone wrong with Deli Ali? I think the injury he suffered, um, I can't remember exactly what it, when it was last season, uh, has, been, has been a big factor. I don't think he's He's, he's fully recovered physically from that. And, and now you find he's a little betwixt and between in what position he plays. And that's been added to by the sense that Son has made himself undroppable and they seem to want to play Son and Kane as a two. I think partly to relieve the burden on Kane, who, you know, physically has played a huge amount of football, mm. suffered some bad injuries himself last year. Uh, so the main pool guy for that has been Ali because 
his role used his best role for me is playing off Harry Kane um, you know getting on the end of things because that's his game you know he's a funny player in that you often watch him and he won't do a huge amount but if he's scoring or getting assists that's sort of fine the problem is if he isn't doing that then you're questioning what you're really getting from him Um, and I think that's slightly where we are with him at the moment and I do just question how fit he is Uh, he hasn't looked right for me all season Maybe, you know, maybe not getting called up to England squad will be a blessing and he can actually have a couple of weeks to work on his fitness. But yeah, I mean, he's, he's symptomatic, isn't he, of that? What was a brave new world now seems like it's regressing slightly. You'd wonder as well like, how many sleepless nights Pochettino's had about that decision not to start Lucas Moura in the Champions League final, considering what he had done in the semi-final, the form he was in. And... From reading Kian Balaguer's book in Pochettino, which was essentially a, the, the diary of a season from a couple of years back, like, he is very self-aware, Pochettino, probably more so than most managers and somewhat obsessed with his profile and how he looks and what people think of him. To make what in hindsight is that big an error in his biggest game, you'd wonder what sort of effect that's had on him over the summer as well. Yeah, I don't know specifically about Mora, but I think the that Champions League final has, I mean, he mentions it a lot. Um, you know, and it, it does seem like it has affected him quite badly. And you, you mentioned the book there, and in that book, he goes on and on about a five-one defeat to Newcastle, mm. which was the last day of the previous season. And it was actually fairly well. It meant they finished third rather than second behind Arsenal, but it wasn't. You know, it, it didn't lose in the league or anything. But it really sticks with him, and he just can't get it out of his head. Um, and on that occasion, he channels it positively, and they get through it. But yeah, you, it wouldn't surprise me if he is stewing over that uh, that Champions League final. I don't think that's necessarily affecting um, the job he's doing, but yeah, he wouldn't be human. A- anyone would would have regrets over a game like that. That you know, it was very, it was very flat, and they were behind for more or less the whole game. Um, specifically on Mora, I don't know. I don't know if that's um, a regret he has. I mean, Mora obviously he scored that hat trick, and you think he has to play. But then Harry Kane comes back and do you not play him? So it was a, I, I can see both sides of that. In that book as well, he sort of seems to flip consistently between with his relationship with Daniel Levy between feeling that they need to push on, they need to spend money, but also that he to- totally understands the way Tottenham operates and he, he's bought into that. That was a couple of years ago. With his reputation having been enhanced so much over the last couple of years and maybe him having a bit more of a bargaining chip in those conversations with Levy when it comes to spending money. He hasn't really let it out there that he was overly frustrated. Maybe that line that he was now the coach, not the manager again, which was a, a tipping point a couple of years ago. Have there, been, have there been signs around the club at all that Pochettino is pretty pissed off about their summer transfer dealings? As you say, it's weird because he um, he's normally very, you know, like the ideal club man and mm. won't really, um, you know, say anything... You know, he'll sort of toe the party line, but then he does occasionally come out with these bombshells, you know, that he's, you know, that he could leave or, you know, I thought that one about him in the summer, him saying, you know, maybe I should go back to being the head coach or the manager. That was, you know, quite a spiky pointed thing to say, um, which I think did betray frustration, um, you know, that he didn't feel it was the summer that he'd quite hoped for. Um there's been nothing subsequently, but that felt telling um, and would be understandable. You know, he has done, let, let, they've both done incredible jobs, really, when you look at, you know, the stadium and, and, and that side of things. But I can also see when you're Pochettino and you're doing the sort of job he has and you feel we're so, so close um, to feel, you, you know, just not getting that final push um, would be very frustrating and I, I do think that um, manager head coach uh, outburst reflected that It had looked six, nine months ago that maybe things wouldn't work out for him if he is to move on from Spurs with Ole Gunnar Solskjaer gets the Manchester United job, Zinedine Zidane gets the Real Madrid job, as it's turned out who knows both those jobs could well be available again over the coming months Has what's happened at Tottenham at the start of this season and particularly with their league form at the end of last season has it damaged his reputation, do you think, with other leading clubs and his possibility of getting one of those big jobs if he were to leave Spurs? No, I don't think so. I think he, uh, his reputation 
is is well entrenched now. He's done such an amazing job over such a long period of time that no, I think if uh, you know, even if it were to go horrendously and they were to you know lose their next five matches and he were to get sacked, which I think is unlikely, but even if that did happen, I think most clubs would be shrewd enough to say clearly something wasn't right, but that's that, you know, that's happened, that's in the past. I think he, his reputation is pretty formidable now. Um, and he could get, he could definitely get one of those big jobs, which as you say, could be available fairly soon. Charlie, great stuff. Thanks a lot for taking the call. Cool, thank you very much. Charlie Eccleshare there from The Athletic talking about the problems at Spurs, ninth in the table and a tough task at hand as well to reach the knockout stage of the Champions League. The Pat Kenny Show with Jaguar. Tomorrow morning at nine on News Talk. The flu season is officially here, so mind yourself and call into your local Lloyd's Pharmacy. The flu vaccination is available in many of our stores nationwide, and our highly trained staff are there to advise on the best range of medicines, vitamins, and supplements you and your family will need for winter well being. Lloyd's Pharmacy. Say hello to the people that know. Always discuss with your pharmacist for suitability. Are you looking for a new used car? Look no further. At carnext.com, we select only high quality used cars younger than five years old, selected and perfected. So you can enjoy any car, anytime, anywhere at carnext.com. The United Kingdom is due to leave the European Union on the 31st of October. Brexit will mean changes for people living in Ireland, so it's important that you understand what these changes will mean for you. Many things will remain the same, but some of the changes may have a bigger impact on your daily life than others. It's important that you make sure you are as prepared as possible. Find out what you need to know at gov.ie forward slash Brexit, an initiative of the Government of Ireland. You know what they say, good things come to those who wait. But three to five working days, lads, that's pushing it now. If I'm down in Arklo or Mullingar trying to order a new washing machine, I want it from someone with the largest next day delivery and installation area in Ireland. And that's appliancesdelivered.ie. Whether you want a dishwasher in Dublin, a new oven in Nace, or a tumble dryer in Tullamore, Appliances Delivered has you covered. Plus, we're the highest rated electrical retailer in Ireland, with a juicy 9.7 on Trustpilot as voted for a by yourselves. Get next day delivery and installation now at appliancesdelivered.ie. A storage story brought to you by Nesta. So why are you putting your home gym equipment into storage? Well, I had to make room for my boyfriend who's moving in. His name is Jim and he's got So this. it's a case of Jim moving in and Jim moving out. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> should make for more enjoyable workouts though. Behave. Nesta Storage. Make room for life. As Brexit gets closer, selling to the UK may become more challenging. So it's vital that Irish companies look towards new markets. Enterprise Ireland is here to help you take that step. Our comprehensive supports range from market entry advice and research to funding and access to expert advisors in over 30 international offices. Take the step into new markets. Visit globalambition.ie to find out more. Enterprise Ireland. If